Hey, it's been a while since I have been here on YouTube and I've had a few questions about that. So I just thought I'd pop in with the layout today and a little explanation of where I've been. If you didn't know, uh, about six months ago, we started renovating the house that we had bought. We bought the house um, a little bit before that. And the whole place is a building site. <laughs> we don't have, well, the bathroom is pretty much done, but every other room is in a state of being completely reworked. But I won't bother you with the longer tale of that right now. Just know that the reason I am not doing YouTube right now comes from the fact that one, it's very noisy in here when all of the work is being done. Two, there's no space. I don't have my normal studio done, so I just have this tiny little bit of space that I can claim when nobody else is in the house. Otherwise, this is where we all spend our time, and it's this tiny little corner of one room. Um, and the time that it takes to edit YouTube videos. It's just something that's had to kind of go by the wayside until we can get all the work done because that's an extra bit in my daily um, work, things I need to get done in the house so that eventually it won't be a building site. So I'm really, really looking forward to being back here all the time. Um, but it's going to take a little bit longer until we've got that space back. But today I'm going to show you this, which you won't be able to see my face because there is nowhere I can do to the camera today. But um, when it's all done, you'll see my ugly mug whether you like it or not. <laughs> so today I want to show you how to make, um, well, how I'm making this layout using the silhouette. See, you can hear noise in the background, right? <sighs> Once it's all done, we won't have any of that. Okay, um, we... What, I, what I'm doing is working with this cut file. It's from Paige Evans, available on her Silhouette store, her Etsy store. And it's uh, if you search for Paige's um, Polaroid frame, that, that, should, that should come up. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut this three times to get what I'm going to use, and I'm going to get two layouts out of that. So the first thing I did was to cut it in white. And this was actually, this turned out to be an unnecessary step, but I'm going to just use the white version um, on another layout. So here's the original white cut file so that you can see it here. And that was the first thing I cut on this, um, of this file, All right? So I'm gonna put that to the side. And then what I did was I wanted a variety of colors for the frames. So these are all different patterns from my Never Grow Up collection with American Crafts. And what I did was to look at the um, the cutting mat. I can peel this off now. This is also from Never Grow Up, by the way. It's a B-side with all these stars. And it'll make sense in a moment why the white one was unnecessary because I could have done this one first, but I hadn't figured that out yet. Hence, I'm sharing that information with you. So here's what I did. I cut it in the white. Then I could see on the mat where each frame was if I looked at the cutting lines. And so then I took scraps of the different papers and stuck them to the sheet to go around so it would have been a scrap like this and then the next one and the next one and so on. So I cut all of these in one pass by having a bunch, 11 different scraps of paper on there. Okay, but then I needed something for the string because I'm going to work on a white background so I didn't want white for my string. So then I went ahead and cut it from this and the blue is going to be my string. Now, ha, huh, I could have just cut this one first and not needed the extra white that I cut out. So that would have given me the cut line and I'm not quite sure why I didn't think of that, but I didn't. So look for another layout that will have the white version and today I'm going to use this blue version as the string and I'm not going to take the frames off because I'm going to use it to layer it up and give it a bit of dimension. And then for my photos, because you'll notice these frames are very small. So I wanted to do a whole bunch of photos from the parade and I used the Project Life app to put six photos onto a four by six which would then, if it were full size, make them two by two prints. But even that is a bit too big for this frame. So I then used my printing app to add a border and then printed it out like that. So I printed these on the Canon Selfie with a border and that got me to the size that would fit nicely inside there. 
Okay, so I'm going to cut all these apart, get this up off the mat, and it's not going to take too long to put it all together. The cutting part was definitely the most labor intensive part of this whole layout. Starting with this blue, I'm going to use the whole piece and put it across that background. Just going to turn it over and add enough adhesive that it's going to stay in place. Easy peasy. Those wide strips at the bottom give us a little bit more space to add the glue. And then these long skinny strips need a little bit too. Start up here at the top and press it down as I go. everything stuck down everything's happy easy now I don't have to worry about um, like there's a little bit of glue inside here but I don't need to worry about that because the photos are going to go on next so I'm going to do another layer with putting the pictures inside all of those frames and then I'm going to put these over the top adhesive into each box they're really small, so we don't need much to make everything stick. And then I need to choose which photo goes in each box. I like to keep it pretty chronological. So let's see if I can remember what order the parade goes in. This is the beginning of the parade with Belle and the Beast, Cinderella, and Prince Charming. And then I've got Anna. Else is just around the corner there. And I think Ariel comes before Rapunzel, but I could be wrong. But here we go Ariel, Rapunzel, Merida. Then we get out of princesses and into some different characters. So I've got Pinocchio. I've got Donald and Daisy. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to swap. So this is not a character, but one of, like, not a named character, but one of the performers on this float. I just happened to get quite a good photo of her, so I wanted to include that. Okay, then Donald and Daisy. Pluto. And Minnie and Mickey. So there's 11 shots from the parade. I printed 12, knowing that one would, I would have one extra. And the one I left out was the dragon, Maleficent's dragon, because um, it's much darker than the others. And I knew there were 11, so I was just going to leave that one out. Next up, adding the frames over the top of that. But I cut them with scraps, so they've got a little bit extra at the top. And I want to take them down to right next to the little tape that hooks them to the string. So I'm going to cut each one down to that shape so there's going to be a little gap at the top. Add my adhesive and cover each one. And I'm going to put it right on top of the shape that's there to make the frame. Don't worry, I'm going to come back and add something to that in a minute too. But first, all the frames over the top. Now with them all stuck down, I can give them a little bit of texture by curling up some of these edges. And of course, if that is not something that you like, if you don't like the look of it coming up off the page, then don't do that. Make sure your edges are stuck down nice and tight, but I kind of like it. Just make it look a little bit more 
realistic that they are hanging up. There we go. And I want to add some paint and ink and that sort of thing to the background and on top of these frames, but I've already got my photos down. I wanted to be able to do it after the photos because I want some of the droplets to get onto the pattern paper here. So instead, what I'm going to do is just use the scraps that I have from cutting out this cut file and use those boxes to cover up the photos. So they are sitting on my cutting mat. I can just take them off the cutting mat and place them on top of each photo so that I don't have to worry about painting the pictures, basically. And it doesn't cause me any worry because these little boxes weren't going to get used for much anyway. I suppose there's enough there to punch one shape, but they're not perfect squares, so I probably wouldn't use them to create the layout on their own. And the other side was a cut apart, so it has everything kind of cut in a random spot. Wouldn't really have been very useful either. All those in there, and then I can add my paint. While we're working on the house, you might guess that we have a lot of paint samples, and you would be right. So I'm going to use two of them today. Um, these, So these are not anything specific. These are literally blue paint samples that I have. If you really need to go, need to know, this one is from Fired Earth, and it's called Nordic Light. I would call that light blue. And this one is more a medium blue. It's called Nordic Sky by Dulux. Super simple, wet toothbrush paint sample dipped in, and then just ping it over the page. <laughs> because it's plain white cardstock, and I want to add not a lot of color and pattern, but a little bit of color and pattern, some texture. I've got so many patterns in the foreground, so I know I don't need a ton going on, and it would probably be difficult to see the busy photos that are so small and all of the pattern frames if I put another pattern in the background with much. So this gives me just a little bit of something to keep the background from being totally flat but not compete. So that's the light blue and then I'm going to repeat with the dark blue and then I have to leave it to dry before I do anything else because let me tell you so many times I don't want to leave it to dry. I'm completely impatient, and do you know what happens every time? I end up messing it up, because I end up getting paint everywhere. So there we go. Now this one is a little different, in that it has its own little paint roller, and I just want to squeeze the paint out. So I will do that. I should probably use a paper plate or something so I don't get the paint spilling on my layout. It's probably giving you anxiety already, so. I'll do it on a separate spot. Much safer situation. I've squeezed it out <laughs> onto a bit of plastic packaging. And then I can add the darker paint this way. Okay, now I let it dry, clean up my paintbrush, and my desk. Everything's dry. Next up, I need to figure out what I'm going to add here, and it's some washi tape. I want it to be wide enough to cover that gap, and dark enough to add some contrast, because I'm going to go right over the tops of all these little pattern pieces. Now, of course, you could do this with another layer of paper, or use any of the papers that you've already included to cut the little pieces that go there and you could have it be paper rather than tape. But I like the idea of paper. You could also add in, um, you could use little clips. So if you've got, um, you know, those kind of mini wooden peg type clips, like the kind you would, they look like 
what you would pick out your laundry with, but they're tiny. You could use those, and in fact, you don't even need to use the whole thing. You could take them apart and glue one half down um, per frame. You don't need the depth of the whole clip because that's going to be really deep and probably not fit in a page protector. But if you cut it, if you take it apart, you take the metal part off, then it could work. Just have half a wooden peg. They come in all sorts of colors and things, so that could be pretty. But I wanted to mix the light and the dark blue, and now time for title and embellishment. In Never Grow Up, this is the thicker alphabet. It's white foam with the printed top, and it's quite a large alphabet. There's not a small alphabet in this collection because this one, which is the silver puffy letters from Field Trip, is designed to go with this collection as well so that you don't need a whole new pack. So if you haven't got these, you can, of course, use whatever you have, but and they will go with both collections because we've got silver accents in this collection as well. So I'm going to add my title right onto the little string using a couple different kinds of stickers. Now on a page like this, I need to find somewhere to put the journaling and I could have kept a few photos off and put the journaling on one of the frames or more of the frames because that's quite a small space or I could write a little bit on each one, I suppose. But what I'm going to do instead is write along the two top strings so then the wording on the third string just becomes a natural extension of where the wording goes and so I'll just kind of leave a gap when I get to the washi tape each time. Now I could leave it here it has the photos it has a title it has generally it has everything it needs but I'd like to add a little embellishment along the way I'm going to bring in some of the layered flower stickers and I pretty much want to follow where the colors are here. So I've got this one with the purple and blue as well. I think that can fit right down there. Um, and then maybe just a set of leaves over by the two green boxes and that would give me a nice bit of balance with three different layered pieces. Put these over here. Yeah. And then maybe bring in some orange right around the middle because I've got three orange enamel dots left on my embellishment sheet. No more rhyme or reason to it than that. A little triangle around Meredith, the orange will match her hair. And are there some puffy stickers or some wood buttons? I want something up here in the pink. I've got um, a butterfly that can land on that flower. And maybe a feather or two over here. Bring that blue up a little bit there. Yeah, and then this butterfly could come down with the flowers here, I think. Uh, this little turquoise and green flower can go on that one. I think that's all I need from that. I could add a red one in here, maybe. Yeah, let's put one up here at the top of the red frame. Why not? Maybe this blue one with the pink and yellow flowers in the middle. Just looking to make sure I'm, I'm not uh, covering anything that's going to destroy the meaning of the photo, but there's just shadow there. I do have these two in kind of the same position though. Actually, that just took the paper up with it because I'd already put paint on it, so that's where it's going to stay, no matter what. <laughs> Once you put paint on a pattern paper, it does get a little bit more fragile. I think I'm going to leave it here in the same spot. Oh, here. No, I've got a random stranger up here in the corner. Bye-bye, random stranger. You are now a butterfly. 
why not? Um, oh, does that mean every frame has something except this one? Yeah. So maybe I need to add a little something here. This one has flowers on it. polka dots. Not sure if two on one frame is too much. No, I kind of like it. Okay, and then could also use my tiny stamps from this set to add a little bit of color and then it's done. So I'm going to use two different inks from scrapbook.com. Thank you to them for giving these to me. Um, so this is Glass Slipper, which is Sky 1, and Surfboard, which is Blue 2. They're hybrid ink pads. And I'm going to be using the little stars and hearts in this set from Never Grow Up. And I want to show you how the little ones the little tiny stamps create a little bit of detail. So I'm starting with the solid star and I'm using this glass slipper because it's quite close to the um, the blue that I've used for the string and these are indeed going to be pretty subtle. So I'm just putting a few across the page, bring some down here, but I would need to take the wood buttons off, so I'm going to go there instead. Okay, then swap over to the outline stamp. So this is the star outline, and I'm going to use the darker blue ink. So this is surfboard. And then go back to those stars go over the top of them this one I need to get more in the corner of my block to get that one yeah and then I'm just going to stamp off the extra making it a little more faint. All of my stars got a little buddy now. There we go. Now the hearts work a little bit differently because the hearts are not the same size. The hearts, instead of going over the top of each other, are designed so that you do the big heart and then the little heart next to it, or maybe overlapping, so you can still do the same idea of the heart in the lighter color, the solid heart in the lighter color, and the darker heart, the solid heart in the lighter color, and the outlined heart in the darker color, so that you can overlap them. Hopefully I got that out there. But I'm not going to mix the two on this um, particular layout because I think the stars are enough. So what I'm going to do is then take my solid star and go back and just add a few more solid stars without an outline. Because this one is um, pretty subtle in that background and I like the texture that it gives. So I'm just going to kind of dot that around in a few different places. Just staying in these little groups that I've made, basically. we go. Oh, I think it needs one more there. I'd stamp too many times. Okay. And that's where I'm going to call it finished. 
Thanks so much for bearing with me here on YouTube. I'm glad you're here. I hope you enjoyed this little different layout and I hope you'll stick around and see something even different next time. And I hope you have a very creative day.